This is uh, Daniel Treon, right here. Dustin. Oh, Ben. <laughs> this is the guys, guy that took my place on the crew. Any of you guys know Ben? I was, <laughs> and this is Eric. He's our, he's our sales, um, sales guy along with, with Derek. And I wanted to say something about Ben here quick. Just, I just need a half a minute. Talking about people, they don't come to you just like perfectly, you know, just fitting the bill, right? So we, Weston, we know his story. Um, but Ben took his place and it's like, wow, is Ben going to be able to fill his his role, you know, building water features, kind of specializing in that and doing the kind of the media thing. I mean, Ben is a bulldozer. This man will move mountains. This guy, this guy knows how to get work done. But we were a little worried about his, maybe his customer interactions and, you know, all of that. But you know what? Here he is and he's doing, he's doing a wonderful job. So way to I go. Let's take some molding. <laughs> I think the YouTube channel likes him better than me now. Um, <laughs> I'm better. <laughs> <laughs> so, and also, we have, I don't know if you all met uh, Nikki, but she took Weston's uh, place with the marketing. Um, so Nikki has, is the only one here with sparkles or stars on her Yeah, she needed uh, on glitter her on her name so badge. That's, that's her personality. Um, back there she is, there's Nikki. <laughs> She's the one with the camera. <laughs> and, uh, and last but not least, my lovely wife is back here. She's way back there at the table. She won't stand up and she's gonna love me for this, but Diane is, um, yeah, the piece that holds us, holds us together here. So anyhow, go ahead, Weston. Okay, so we have 15 minutes. I wanted to give plenty of time for Q&A because so much of this is not just presentation, but it's like, well, what about this? We all have unique questions. So who wants to go first? Remember the rules, state, your question, state your, who your question is for, and go. And here's Reynold. So Reynold just showed up here as well. Derek, what are your responsibilities on the actual job site after you close the sale? Uh, it's a great question. I'm in a, I'm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> keep listen keep out of there. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they say that, but they enjoy when I show up with uh, milk and cookies. Yeah, so. We're, we, I mean, and, and that, that was another thing I, I did want to mention. Another reason why last year I was able to sell is because I do not babysit any of my jobs. I don't need to. They don't want me there. Um, you know, details kill deals. Same way with like, I'll even say this and I mentioned like details as far as like jobs. I give them enough detail and concepts of like, this is the, this is generally what we want to do, but you got, there's so much that they got to figure out on site anyway that, um, yeah, once I hand it off, I let the homeowners know, and these are the guys, it's their project. Um, you know, we have uh, group chats, Telegram, they have questions, they get a hold of me, or phone calls, but it, it's, yeah, they're few and far between. So this is for uh, Derek as well, or the foreman's. Um, is there, you said so, so much about detail in your design, how accurate are you, like, as far as different amount, uh, if it's a large project, a different amount of steps, and the foreman's go out and be like, hey, we need an extra step there, or are you pretty much down the detail on that? Uh, I mean, no, if there's an extra step needed and an extra step is needed, you know, they'll call and let me know, hey, this is kind of what we're seeing, according to what you were telling me, like, looks like we need an extra step, and it's like, well, that, we need an extra step. You know, there's just, we give them leeway to, yeah, here's a general concept, and yeah, either I screwed up or I missed an elevation, or like for a situation like that, but yeah, no, it's, it, they do whatever it takes to make the project how it's supposed to. Yeah, I guess my question would be for uh, Steve. Um, I've thought about doing uh, for the uh, employees like a profile, uh, personality profile to see where they would naturally fit in on a crew. Um, just, and so is that something you guys ever did or thought you might want to do? We have never done that. Um, most of our guys come in, typically come in young and they, they kind of work their way through. We kind of feel out maybe where, where they end up fitting the best. Does that, does that line up with you guys? So do you find yourself just kind of promoting crew leaders from within? That's right. Okay. Thanks. Um, I don't think so. Right, Dan well, was the closest. Just, yeah, like, like Steve said, out of necessity, uh, we needed Dan to step up to be a foreman, and yeah, almost 20 years later. Steve and Matt, 
or for you, maybe Derek, what's the handoff process look like and when is that done for a job, so especially if you're uh, booked out, you know, a number of months ahead, when do you hand the job to the crew leader uh, or the, the job manager and also um, what does that process look like? Do you sit down and go through all the details and order material? Who orders the materials and that kind of thing? So I order the main material. When a job gets sold, um, I order the main materials such as like, um, if it's a pool, the pool, the components, um, hardscape, walls, kind of all the main stuff gets ordered immediately as soon as the, the job gets sold. And then it goes down through our yard and staging areas. Um, that way we know we have all the product in place um, as far as um, any of the other, like concrete or, or um, 2A or limestone or any of that type of stuff, it's the, it's the foreman's uh, project from that point. He orders things as he needs them. Um, different geographical locations, they all know, you know, the different quarries or this guy's got dirt or this place we can dump, go dump there. So basically, yeah, once I hand it off, it's, uh, it's these guys' job, and they, they order things as, as they need them. So, um, as far as how the job gets handed off, it's basically the day of. Um, either Eric or myself, we meet them in the morning, go over the designs, and then, um, you know, big enough project, we actually go out to the job site. Most of the time, I guess, we do go out to the job site with them. Uh, basically, just, yeah, go over everything and introduce them to the clients, and uh, they start digging. When that job gets sold, we, in our weekly or bi-weekly scheduling meetings, that job gets scheduled to a particular crew. So we kind of scope that out depending on the type of job it is and where it should fit on the schedule. So that, that is kind of set in place right away. And then, yeah, like Derek said, from there, it, it's handed off at the time we start the job. Thank you. I'm sorry, I have another sales question. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I don't care who answers it though. Do you have predetermined timeline of uh, the sales pipeline funnel process? So meaning, you know, you have to have the initial consultation within a week. You have to have first round designs within another week. You have to close the deal within three weeks kind of thing. No, we don't. Um, when, when people call in to schedule a consultation, like again, we do Tuesdays and Thursdays, Patty schedule it, schedule it so she will schedule the consultation it kind of first comes, first serve, the next one that fits in. Uh, so when I go out and meet with them, though, I, I kind of know where I am with like how many designs I've got on my, on my you know, table or to do. So I will let the clients know, we don't have anything predetermined, but I will let them know I'm gonna be back in touch within a week, I'm gonna be back in touch within two weeks. So yeah, as soon as I'm, as soon as I'm done with the 3D design, the estimate, the video walkthrough, all that, I give them a call and try to set up a um, you know, time that uh, they can both meet me in my office. You've had your crew for 10 years or more, the, the lead guys. How, do you remember how you transferred the quality control to your foreman? Like now it's a, it's a culture. How do you develop that in your team? And Reginald, what, what's the best piece of equipment to buy? We'll let one of the foremen answer that one. Uh, as far as quality control, <clears throat> that's uh, once again, that's that uh, type of mentality that we've all bought into that we're trying to give the client the best possible experience that they can possibly have and uh, by dotting all the T's and I's and all those types of things on the on the actual um, uh, contract you know so uh, I'm doing the final walk around at the end of the project um, you know making sure everything is 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 done okay and then constantly throughout the project talking to the client, making sure that their expecta expectations are being met, and also setting expectations, right? When it comes to like grass coming back in at the end of the project, um, plant maturity, making sure things are, making sure they know that things need watered, all those, all those little things that, that goes on during and, and, and also at the end of the project, Derek doesn't really do, or Eric don't really do a final walk around with the client, that's, that's on, us to do and so once again it's part of that that culture that we've all bought into part of the expectations that we're all trying to meet if it's not done right we're all going to hear about it and whoever was on the job is going to have to go back and fix it so 
that happens a couple times and you kind of, you know, learn that, hey, that can't happen. The, the in-person displays that Tussie built over 10, 15 years in this rural market with water features and all of that, you kind of have to create your demand and people have to see it. Um, so that has been really influential. Like every year we would do a display for, I don't know, 10 years we did that? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, if, if you're selling water features, displays are a, a must. Um, yeah. And you just got to... I found the easiest way, easiest way to put displays in places was just, just do it. Don't make the, you know, don't make the uh, place pay for anything. Um, you know, we put a giant display. We we're trying to get into the, into the state college market um, for a while. I'm trying to think of a place to put a display or something in up there. And I just was driving along one day, saw a nice little farm that that sold like ice cream and whatnot. I I swung in chit-chatted with them for 45 minutes or an hour and next thing I know you know we're putting some cash into it and like you say hey what do we you know I showed them a design and and like we could do all this well what's it it's not gonna cost you anything can you pay for the electricity and the water yeah are, are you guys serious like yeah because we want to get in I mean it's just you got to mark you got to put dollars out to make money all right so um, I want to do one last thing Ben catch all right, so real quick, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when, and then pass it down to each, each of the foremen? What's the first thing that comes to your mind, uh, actually, Derek and Eric too, what's the first thing that comes to your mind um, of what it takes to want to work at a place for more than 10 years? I'm ready, I'll go. Start that, or, start that way. Talk here, yeah. can you hear me? Uh, for, for me personally, it's all about work-life balance. I have lots of interests outside of my work. I love my job, but I love lots of other things too. Tussie's given me a tremendous environment to be able to make a good living, to have a home, a wife, a child, do things I love, and also work with people I like. That's a win-win for me. Amen. Eric? Yeah, for me, I would say it's freedom and having the ability to grow. Um, it's, that's really important to me, having that, building that trust with the company, the team members, the owners, uh, of given that green light to to be able to grow within the company, really be able to figure out which direction you want to go, and yeah, what's important to you? Where do you see yourself going? Where do you want to grow into? Which avenue do you want to go within the company, within the industry? And that's really important to me. Um, so I'd say, yeah, freedom. Yeah, and to, to shout out to Eric, he started as just a laborer on the crew, right? Yeah, six but years. But he was doing maintenance, that's right. He was doing the maintenance van runs. Six what years, he, yeah. For six years, right? Six years ago, I started. Six years ago, and what he really wanted was a sales job right out of the gate. So he came and worked the bottom rung of the ladder, and look where he is today. So, Dustin. I got it. Not, not, okay, you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're not gonna skip it though. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I've been asked this before, and uh, Weston and I have actually talked about it, but one of, and I concur with these guys, um, absolutely, and I would add to that uh, value. Um, and what I mean by that is I feel uh, my position at the, and, and me personally, as an individual, is valued in this company, but also that I give value. I give value both back to the company but also to the clients that I deal with every day. So uh, along with what they said, I would say value. Thank you, Dan. Dustin? Yep. Can I just say what they said? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the big thing is the, the freedom you can have. I have a lot of hobbies I like to do after work, so they've been yeah very well with giving me time to go do all that stuff. But yeah. Yeah, which means um, not working after five, not yep. working Saturdays. Seven to five days, that's nice. Yep. Doesn't kill you every day. But then for so you come freedom back. also to run your job. True. Yep. Yeah, the autonomy. That's yeah. a huge thing. That's one, one word that hasn't been mentioned yet. The autonomy of making that decision. Absolutely. And just, yeah, the seven to five is nice because 90 degree days during the summer can burn you out pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So just have a seven to five day and then refresh, get ready for the next day. So, yep. yep. Thank you, Dustin. Appreciate it. Ben? Yeah, I would say it probably comes down to two things for me. Um, you, you have to like what you do. I, I, you have to be passionate about the work, and I, I would have had the opportunity to move on in a different career, and you know, we thought about it, and after a while, it's like, 
if I make twice the money that I am now, but I hate what I'm doing, is it worth it? And so for me, it's like, I love it. I like what I do. And uh, yeah, the other thing is like, just the way that Tusty is structured, it, it makes you feel like, I don't feel like I'm just a piece in a big machine. Um, I feel like I know the numbers. I, I, it, in a sense, it almost feels like it's your business. Like I want to see them su succeed, and I know what the numbers are. And it, this is not important to some people, but to me, to be able to finish up a job and know that I hit the goals, and like, and then also like they give back to you after that. You know, if if they're successful, you're successful, and working in a company that that makes that possible is, is a big thing to me because it gives you, it gives you inspiration. Mm -hmm. I don't just show up and work a job. Thank what you I guys. What I do matters. Yeah, that's, how's that for some quality answers and content on culture and leadership? Thank you.